In this clip I'm going to tell you about um, one of the most fascinating features of quantum theory um, which goes by the name of quantum non-locality. Okay? So to understand what quantum non-locality is all about we need to think about a particular setting in which Alice and Bob might find, uh, which, in which two experimenters might find themselves. Okay, so to think about this, I want you to rewind and pretend you don't know anything about science. Okay, and imagine what it's like to be a scientist where you're really working from scratch. Okay, so imagine that we've got two scientists, Alice and Bob, and they're very far apart, but they they've got some systems which they want to investigate okay and these systems i'm going to represent by two boxes like this and on the two boxes there's they're going to be two buttons so there's a a black button okay and a white button okay and then there's going to be a light at the top of each box so this is a light and the light will either flash or it won't flash depending upon the way in which the experimenter presses the buttons, okay? So, now, if we imagine that these boxes were prepared at some point in the past by a, a manufacturer and then distributed to Alice and Bob, well, Alice and Bob, as, as scientists, will want to investigate their behaviour, okay? So they'll want to press the buttons and then um, note whether the, the system flashes or not, uh, the boxes flash on each side or not and then they want to come out with a theory that describes um, how the uh, response of the box in terms of the light flashing or not flashing is related to the choices of button uh, that they press okay now I'm going to imagine for simplicity that in each experiment Alice will either choose to press the black button or the white button but they won't choose to do to press both buttons at the same time okay so then there are four possible choices that can be made, okay? So if Alice could choose to press the black button and Bob could choose to press the black button, Alice could press black, Bob could press white. Bob, uh, Alice could press white, Bob could press black, or they could um, both choose to press the white buttons, okay? So a scientific theory will be a way of um, describing how the system responds to these choices of, 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 of um, experiment that Alice and Bob can do. Okay, so to, to describe the theory, we'll we'll need to have four columns. Okay, so in each column, we'll list the possible responses of the system. So one possible theory that you could have. So I'll, I'll write one possible theory is. So for instance. You know, every time anyone presses a black button, they get a flash. But if they press a white button, they get no flash. Okay. So this would be the response of the, uh, of the system. Okay. When Bob, uh, when each of them press, uh, presses black, they'll get a flash. But if, if they don't press black, they'll get, the, if they press white, they'll get no flash. Okay. So this is an example of something called the deterministic theory. Okay, deterministic, and deterministic, that's a C if you can't see it there, means that um, the response, there's always one fixed set of responses for every possible choice of experiment, okay? But you can have a, um, an, a so-called non-deterministic theory where um, the responses are not fixed, okay? So for instance, it could be that if Bob, if Alice presses black, then sometimes she, it won't flash and sometimes it will flash. But maybe if Bob presses, Bob presses black, then always his system will, will, will uh, respond with a flash. Okay? So this is a non-deterministic a non theory because so, uh, the response of the box is not 100% predictable. Okay? And so you can make this more sophisticated in that... Um, you know, you could even put probabilities down or odds. So you could put down the odds that there'll be a flash or there'll be no flash. But for why I'm going to talk about it, that doesn't really matter. We're only going to talk about a non-deterministic theory as having more than one possible response um, for a given experimental situation or a deterministic theory having only one possible response for a given experiment. Okay. 
But there's more than deterministic or non-deterministic theories. There's also um, different types of classification of these theories. Okay, So you could, for instance, have an uncorrelated theory, and that's where despite the fact that these two machines were prepared at the same place um, and then distributed, um, their behavior is completely independent. Okay, So the way that Alice's machine responds is completely independent of, of the way Bob's, uh, of Bob's choices. Okay, And so that would be something called an un uncorrelated theory. But you could also have a, a theory which is called, which is a very correlated type of theory which is called a signaling theory and in a signaling theory the response of Alice's bot, a box depends on Bob's choices in such a way that Bob can use the system to communicate to Alice so for instance let's go back to the original picture suppose that we have a theory where Alice's light flashes when Bob presses the black button, or it doesn't flash when Bob presses the white button, okay? Then Bob can use this to send information to Alice. You know, for instance, if he's having a good day, he can press the black button and Alice's light will flash and she'll know. If he's having a bad day, he'll press the white button and Alice's light won't flash and then she'll know, okay? And then you could also turn it the other way around. You could imagine a signaling theory which allows Alice to communicate to Bob, okay? So when I use the word signaling, I'll mean any theory which allows one of the parties to communicate to the other party. It doesn't matter if it's Bob or Alice that is the one that communicate, can communicate, or even if, if both of them can communicate to the other party. Okay. But um, in quantum theory, there's another type of, of, the of uh, classification that's very important. And this is the so-called non-local but non-signaling theories. Okay. And these are theories in which the response of Alice, Alice's box depends upon Bob's choice of experiment or Bob, the, the choice that Bob, Bob, make, Bob makes in pressing the button, but not in a way that Alice can receive communication from Bob. Okay? So that might seem a little bit surprising. So let's look at an example of such a, a non-local theory. Okay? So this is a th um, something called a Popescu Rawlick box after the inventors. Okay, so it's a non-deterministic theory where, for each possible choice of button presses, there are two possible outcomes. So, if they both press black, either both machines will flash or they won't flash. The same if they both press black or white, they'll either both flash or they won't flash. Same if white or black. But in the final case, that if both um, both Alice and Bob choose to press white, then they must have opposite outcomes. Okay, so either Alice will flash and Bob won't, or Bob's um, or Alice won't flash and Bob will. Okay, and so um, you can see from this that Alice's box needs to know what what Bob's choices are because let's suppose that Alice presses white. Okay, then. If Bob presses white, they need to make sure that they have opposite responses. But if Bob presses black, they need to make sure that they both respond in the same way. Okay, and so Alice's uh, resp uh, Alice's response and Bob's response depend upon the choices made by the other um, the other experimenter. But the point is that despite um, this. These boxes or such mach machines can't be used to communicate from Alice to Bob or the other way around. And why is that? Because each outcome, uh, in each column, each pair of responses is equally likely. So if Alice is just looking at her, the response of her box, it's 50-50 whether it flashes or doesn't flash. And that doesn't matter um, what um, choice of experiment Bob makes. Okay, so the response that on Alice's side alone is a not not enough to determine anything about what Bob decided to do. Okay, now I realise that that's a very quick explanation of a so-called non-local theory. So you'll probably have to think about this a lot more. But the point is that quantum theories appear to that, that 
Popescu Rorlick boxes don't exist in nature as far as, as far as we believe. But it turns out that quantum systems are a type of non-local theory. So even when the labs are very far apart, so Alice and Bob are miles away, and when they, even if they do the experiments simultaneously, quantum systems appear to be non-local in the sense that the response on one side depends upon uh, the choice of experiments made at the other side. But that response is not, um, or, or the link between the two, is not sufficiently st strong to allow us to send, send a signal from one side to the other. And this is really weird because it seems that nature is somehow communicating under the surface, but not allowing us to, com to use that communication to actually transmit information. And this is... Um, something that doesn't happen in so-called classical theories and is one of the, you know, the key features of quantum mechanics.